our main goal today is I want to try and answer this question of what is an operating system, get you thinking about that and thinking about the, the big ideas that we're going to look at in this class. The other two things we're going to do is I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of what the class is about and what you're going to do in the course, and then I'll, I'll introduce the language that we're going to be using. If you saw the URL, it might give you some hint what that is. What is an operating system? Has anyone actually used an operating system before this class? Most of you think you have. Probably you have. How many operating systems are you carrying around today? Three? Anyone more than three? Four? Anyone more than four? If you have, a, say, an iPhone or an Android phone, how many operating systems are running on that? That's one or more than one. At least three or four. And depending on how we define it, maybe even more than that. So you have many, many operating systems, probably each of you carrying around today. What we want to do first is, is try and get a definition of that so we understand what that means and what we're talking about. Look at some definitions that are in textbooks. So here's one from what's sometimes called the, the dinosaur book. It's an awfully long one. I'm not going to read the whole thing. An operating system is a program that manages a computer's hardware. And then there's all sorts of stuff about how amazingly different operating systems are. And then a conclusion that some operating systems are designed to be convenient, others to be efficient, and others to be some combination of the two. Do we like this definition? Should we run out and buy the $186.95 book that came up with this definition? So do you think there are any operating systems that are not designed to be a combination of both efficient and convenient? Windows Vista, OK. Uh, which one is it trying to be? Is anyone actually running Windows Vista today? So you get a sticker for being the first one to offer a question. It will get harder to, to earn stickers as the class goes on. Your bonus for being the first person to answer is to get a sticker. And you may not think stickers are that valuable now, because, well, you can get stickers lots of ways. Yeah, they can cover up if you have like a logo of a fruit or something on your laptop and you don't want to advertise for any companies. They're really good for covering those up. So, uh, but several students did on the evaluation at the end of last semester complain about not getting stickers. Take advantage of the early opportunities when it's easiest to get them. We don't like this definition too much. Let's look at another one. This book costs 95 cents less. I don't know if that makes it better or worse. But its definition is it's software that runs in kernel mode. And even that's not always true. So that's not much of a definition. We're not going to get into today what it means to run in kernel mode, but that's certainly a very important concept. And that is the real core, the most interesting things that operating systems do are running in kernel mode, where they have special powers that regular programs don't have. Here's another definition. This is a really long rambling one. But it actually gets to some things that I, that I quite like. It's pro about providing abstractions of underlying hardware, and it's about managing how things are shared. That starts to get at the two main concepts that we're really going to focus on in terms of understanding what's important about operating systems and what we're doing in this class. There's a lot of rambling before, and, and this quote is, well, it's the software that almost everything else depends upon. It is sort of true and also sort of confusing and sort of meaningless. Almost all programs depend on other programs. And at some level, you get down to a program that doesn't depend on any other programs. And that's, that's getting to the lowest level, and then you get to the hard. We're going to get down to some of those lower levels today. Most of the program you've probably done before today has been at a fairly high level where your program depends on lots of other programs in order for it to run correctly. The final definition I'm going to show you, and this is from a book that certainly has the right price, is that it's the software making it easy to run programs. This is also sort of a, a vague definition in terms of kind of does it really tell you where you draw the line and decide whether something's an operating system or not. But it's really the goal of the operating system is to be able to run other programs. And some things that you need for that, you need to be able to share memory, you need to be able to use devices, and you need to do other fun stuff. Getting at many of the things we touch on, I don't think any of these definitions is really an ideal definition yet. So what property should a good definition have? OK, good. So to enable people to communicate so they understand what something means in the same way. Uh, you had another idea? OK, great. Yeah. So this is definitely something that, that a definition of mathematics should provide. Right? It should provide you with an easy way to give a Boolean answer for anything in the world, whether it satisfies that definition or not. And none of these definitions really do that. And so we're going to try to have a definition that does that. I can fairly ask you the question of, does something have an operating system? Because without a definition that allows you to say, 
yes or no, it satisfies this, you can't really answer that question or it's, it's always going to be debatable. But even the best definition that, that I'm going to try to come up with is still going to be fairly fuzzy. That there are lots of terms in it that, as, as the, the first answer suggested, there's still natural language terms that are also not defined that precisely. So it's very hard to come up with a good definition. Even the definition of definition is uh, pretty unhelpful. So it's something that defines. Not a great definition. So here's a way to view computer systems. And this is a simplistic view, but probably the view that, that most people have, and a view that sort of works for most things that we do. At some high level, you have applications. Those are the programs that users understand and, and can run and think they were using. Below that, you have an operating system, which is programs that these applications are using. And then below that, you have some physical stuff. The operating system is the link between these application programs and the physical stuff. So this is kind of a simplistic view. What are the things that are broken about this picture if you look at a modern computing system? How clear are these layers? Good. So what does that mean? So what, OK, good, yeah. So some things that we think of as hardware Maybe they're really actually running programs. So when I asked you all how many operating systems you're carrying around, um, some of you probably have phones that have SD cards in them. Is the SD card hardware or software? Hardware. So it's a physical thing. At some level, any physical thing is, is hardware. In some sense, well, then the application program is also hardware. Right? That's at some level the physical thing. Right? It's some, there's some physical representation of that program that's on the machine that you're running it on. Does that mean that the SD card is at this hardware layer, layer, or does it have an operating system on it? So these seem like very simple things, but there are actually, you know, a lot of code is going on when you read and write from the SD card. Okay. So all of these interfaces at some level might have these other layers in them. Right? So things that we might think of as hardware, let's say it's an SD card, there is abstractions that applications and the operating system can use to talk to that hardware. But once they get to the card, well, there's some new program that abstracts the lower level hardware on that card from that interface. Right? So there's actually many layers of operating systems going on here in terms of before you get down to the, the actual bits on the card. And one of the reasons you need that is in order to cram as much memory on these cards as possible, they're designed at the very threshold of what can be engineered and built. Right? So many bits on the card are broken and fail. You don't want to have to deal with those failures at the application layer. You don't want to have to deal with those failures at the Windows or Mac or Linux layer. The place where you want to deal with those fa failures is at the card layer. So that's where you sort of have an operating system running on the card that's providing an abstraction of that hardware to the operating system that's running on your laptop. The real world is, is a lot more complex than just these simple layers. But we can still think of, of the operating system as being between programs that we want to run and something else. And the other thing I should mention, things like a web browser, well, that's actually a platform for running program, right? Every web page is basically a program. It's got code running it. It's using resources. That web browser is actually acting an awful lot like an operating system rather than like an application. And most applications today have ways that they can run other programs inside them, so are sort of also becoming operating systems. The definition that we're going to use for the class is that an operating has, system has to do two things. It has to manage resources, and it has to provide abstractions. We'll talk a lot more about what both of those things are, but those are going to be two of the main ideas in this class, is how do you manage resources when you've got multiple people or multiple programs or multiple things trying to use the same resource? Someone's got to decide who gets to use that and how. And the other thing they do is provide abstractions, make it so instead of having to understand all the details about how memory is implemented on an SD card to use that memory, you can write in your program something simple that reads a file. 